888-7753-773. Happy White History Month, folks. July is White History Month. And we have been celebrating. This is our seventh year of celebrating White History. And it's funny, just funny in that it's okay to have every history but white history, right, in my own country. And it's interesting to see some people's reactions to knowing that white history does exist. They just don't know what to think about that. They can't believe that. And then it's it just crazy. But I just want to give you, before I go back to the calls and your super chats, I want to give you a quick little white history moment. This is amazing. Uh, I want to tell you about Sam Houston, white history. Sam Houston, H-O-U-S-T-O-N. This is from TKR officials. TKR officials. Sam Houston was an American general, governor of Tennessee, President of the uh, Republic of Texas, and he held the he helped make Texas its own country. A white man helped make Texas its own country, independent from Mexico. Mommy, Mexico, independent from Mexico. U.S. Senator for Texas and Governor of Texas. Um. And talk about white babies. He had five brothers and three sisters. I want to give you a little bit about Sam Houston. Uh, this is from Stoic His- History. Stoic Historian. Watch his first soundbite of early life of Sam Houston. Why is this? Samuel Houston was born in Rockbridge County, Virginia on March 2nd of 1793. His father's name was also Samuel Houston, making Sam a junior. His mother was Elizabeth Paxton. Together, this couple would have nine children. In his early life, Sam Houston could be described as something of an outcast. As a teenager, he would explore the edges of the frontiers alone, perhaps encountering the local Cherokee tribes that lived just on the peripheries of America. Sam did not even believe in his family's Presbyterian Christianity. And like all good outcasts, Sam rejected most of his schooling in an effort to self-educate himself. He read books from his father's library. When Sam was only 16, he ran away from home in 1809 and went to Hiawasa Island. On this island, a Cherokee tribe of Native Americans accepted the 16-year-old boy as one of their own. And eventually, Sam would learn the Cherokee language with his own Cherokee name. Raven. Sam would live the life of a Cherokee Indian for three years, until 1812, when he returned to Maryville, Tennessee as a much more rugged and experienced 19-year-old man. Then, Sam must have had a change of heart about education and religion, as he attended the Western Theological Seminary. Amazing. All that at 19. Think about it. And you got 18, 19, 20... 40, 30, 60, 50, and maybe even 70 year old men still living with mama today. Mama's boy, haven't you left home? And Sam out there doing it at 16. Think about that. You literally have 18, 19 year old grown men who finish. Well, however, finished high school, some did, and they are living with mama. They ain't no Sam Houston. <laughs> Think about that. They're living with mama. Grown men living with mama. Oh, I can't pay the rent. I can't afford the rent. Get two jobs. Be a Sam Houston. Get three jobs. They living with mama. They living with, think about that. A grown man, 18, and living with mama. And just a comfortable. That's the early life of Sam. I want you to hear about the war of 1812. Watch this. 
had found another opportunity in the War of 1812. This war pitted the new United States of America against its old colonial owner, the British. Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Benton quickly promoted the 20-year-old Sam Houston to third lieutenant. By 1814, this regiment was assigned under the command of General Andrew Jackson. Lieutenant Houston would find himself in a favorable spot, as his Cherokee brethren would help Andrew Jackson in this war. The multilingual Houston probably spent ample time in this war conversing with Cherokee Indians. In 1814, 159 Americans would be wounded, with Sam Houston being among them. He was wounded badly, and many doctors saw little hope for the 20-year-old lieutenant. Miraculously, Wait, though, he survived. Why history? Isn't that amazing? Where are those people now? What are they doing over there when we need them over here? Look how young this man is getting all this done. When we were growing up, that's the way it was. 18, you're out of here. Where am I going? I don't know, and I don't care. You're out of here. Sam Houston. Here is Sam in Tennessee. Watch this. In Nashville, Sam blazed through law school, finishing it in under a year, and opened wow. his own law practice in 1819. The charismatic and loved Houston was then appointed to the district attorney of Nashville and major general of the Tennessee militia. As governor, Houston would support the infrastructure of Tennessee by connecting the many rivers of Tennessee with the construction of canals. Amazing. Oh, in, in his 20s. No, but there are 18, 19, 20 old males living at home with mama in the basement. I want to introduce you to Sam Houston's first wife and, and the Trail of Tears. Watch this. A year later in 1829, the 36-year-old Houston decided to settle down and marry Eliza Ann in January of 1829. This would only last three months as it was rumored that Eliza Allen was in love with a different man. This devastated Houston, who couldn't take the new complicated and divorced hole that he found himself in. Houston longed for an escape, away from the deceitful politicians of Tennessee and away from his divorce. So, Sam resigned as governor, donned his old Native American clothes, and took back his other name, Raven. Raven then set off to join with the Cherokee, who he had helped to resettle in Arkansas. 1829 was a bad year to do this, though. Houston's old wartime and political friend Andrew Jackson ordered for the removal of the Cherokees once again. Sam Houston tried to alleviate the stress of his Cherokee brethren by going to Washington, D.C. to try to gift the Cherokees with food rations on their westward journey. This would fail, and thousands of Cherokees would die on the Trail of Tears due to hypothermia and starvation. Amazing. Isn't that something? Think about that. No, but y'all living at home with mama. Mama says, stay home with me, babe. And you do it. And this man out there doing the trail, trail of tears. My father married a Cherokee. My mother people were ashamed of me. The Indians said that I was white by law. The white man always called me Indian squaw. Happy. That's all I ever heard. Happy. How I love and hate the word. Both sides were against me since the day I was born. Men, it's okay to be a man. It's okay. He later had eight children. White babies. Talk about making white babies. And the, and the men can't even make white babies now because they're at home with mama. They're going to have to bring the woman home to their mama house. And remember, you've been told that the trails of tears were evil? According to this, it was white people trying to help. But no, they lied on the white man and changed his history.
But you think that is good white history? Sam, you some L. <laughs> Sam treated the slaves like he treated everyone. A white man, have you ever heard that white slave owners were good to the slaves? They don't want you to hear that. And I'm being told there are people who want to take Sam Houston's statue down. You know those people are evil. Why are you letting them erase great American white history? Black people ain't doing nothing like this. Well, you also have been lied to about slave owners. I'm sure you can find some rotten apples in the barrel. There's always a few rotten apples in the barrel, right? But all white people are not mean to their slaves. And if you doubt me, watch, listen to Sam Houston State University. This is from Sam Houston State University. Here does hate. This is hate with the hate report. You know, hate report, not the fake report. The hate news. Indeed. <laughs> Sam Houston, uh, according to Sam Houston State University, he was born on and inherited a slave plantation and a mansion, and he owned many slaves throughout his life. Nice. He had a pragmatic, which means practical, uh, attitude toward slavery, believing that both sides of the slavery debate were too extreme on the issue. Nice. So the following is from a 2020 article in AP uh, t- titled Sam Houston Despised Slavery, even though he was born into it and owned many slaves. <clears throat> According to this report, Sam treated his slaves as if they were blood members of his family, and they were allowed to take outside jobs, earn money, and save money. It was illegal for slaves to learn to read and write, but Sam insisted that his slaves be taught reading, writing, and arithmetic as he felt that all should be educated. His former slave, Jeff Hamilton, wrote a book called My Master, The Inside Story of Sam Houston and His Times. And this Jeff Hamilton, former slave, wrote that the slave cabins were comfortable and nicely furnished and that they treated their slaves with kindness and the slaves would speak in glowing terms of the plentiful supply of good food given to the slaves. Isn't that nice? I rest my case. Hey, Sam, when have the last time you heard anything good about white slave owners? And they still try to take down Sam's statue, I'm told. Where'd you get that from? Uh... I just know that they've been doing it. I don't remember. It's oh, okay. been, I just remember them trying to take it down. Isn't that amazing? And what do the white people do? They sit back and let them do it. That old dumb, stupid Nikki Haley let them take down a Confederate flag. And she won't be president. I rest my case. Sam Houston, a true, true, America. My plot to Sam Houston. You lie will always be white history month. <laughs> you lie will always be white history month. Happy white history month. Very nice. Sam Houston, you are amazing. Really. And it's unfortunate that the whites are sitting back in fear and allow even the su- idea or suggestion of your statue being taken down. You are a man to remember and not to forget. And we won't let you forget here on this network. July will always be White History Month. Right. Uh, amazing story, man. It's yeah. really mind-blowing. That article about how he was good to his slaves was an article 
like an op-ed, I guess, in AP, speaking against the trying to tear tear down his statue. They were telling him not to. Yeah. Nice. The uh, person who wrote that. The person who wrote that article in AP. And that's kind of rare. For a, I didn't know Associated Press. That was George H. Russell who gave that report. In I'm AP. stunned that was in the AP. Me too. Back in July of 2020, you know, during the George Floyd Black Lives Matter riots, oh, man, they were trying to tear down all the all of our great statues. Yeah. And Trump was trying to build more statues. And put up and put up Afro combs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Amazing, sir. Amazing. 888, thank you. Yeah. That was mind-blowing.